All right then, so we have our user class and we've created a couple of properties inside it, the email and the name. Now at the minute, these are both public. And that means if I ever create a new user object, much like we do down here, I could change the value of the name or the email of that object at any point outside of the class. I'll show you an example. We've created this new user and we've said the initial name is gonna be Yoshi. So what I'm gonna do first of all is just echo out this name. So user to and then name. Okay, so if I save this and refresh over here, we see that name Yoshi. Now, if I want to, I can update this name property anywhere. So I could say user two, and then the name is now equal to Mario. So now we're overriding that name property. And if I save this, when we echo it out, we should see Mario instead. So we do. Now you might be thinking, well, what is wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that, but it's not great practice to update values this way. Think about it. I could easily just update my name to something like A, or even better, I could update it to 50. And there's nothing stopping me doing that. If I save it and refresh over here, I'm gonna see 50 as my name, okay? There's no kind of validation going on to check that this is a real name. I can do that easily. Now, a better approach would be to make these fields right here private, meaning that we can't directly change them or access them using this syntax down here, but we can still use special class functions inside this class to do these things for us, where we could also implement some kind of validation too. And these functions are known as getters and setters. So getters get a value for us and setters update or set a value. So first of all, let's make both of these fields right here private. So delete public and change that to private. Oops, and don't do it in capital letters. Okay, so we have those two now and the private. Now, if I try to do this, I'm gonna save it and refresh over here, then we're gonna get an error. And it says it cannot access the private property. So, okay, now we can't access them this way. So let's now delete that. Instead, what we're gonna do is create now a function to get the name for us and a function to set the name for us. So we'll do that inside the class itself. Down below the login function, we'll create a public function because we need to access these. And this function is gonna be called get name. And this is gonna get the name for us since we can't just access it directly anymore because it's private. So inside this function, all we do is return this and then the name. Remember, we have access to this referring to this specific object that we have at the time and then get the name property off it. And we're returning that now. So this is a public function that is returning a value. We're accessing the private property from inside the class. We're allowed to do that. We only can't access it outside the class down here, okay? So we're accessing it inside the class when we call this public function and we're returning that value. So if now I try to say something like echo and it's gonna be user two and we want to run the get name function and we're echoing out the result and the result is this stuff it's returning that value to us so if i save and refresh then we should see yoshi awesome so that's how we get the name now if we want to update it it's going to be a little bit more complex but again we're going to create a public function first of all and this function will call set name this is going to set the name for us and it's going to take in a parameter and that will be the name that we want to set it to okay so what do we want to override the current name with now inside this function all i'm going to do is a little bit of validation first of all i'm going to say if and then i'll use a function called is underscore string and this is going to check if something is a string the thing we want to check is the name we pass in right here as an argument when we call that function so we're checking that that's a string first of all, and we're gonna use this logical and operator. This is how we check two conditions, remember. We're also gonna check the string length. So we use the function strlen for string length, and we pass in the name as well. And we want this to be greater than one character, right? So this is the validation right here. We're checking that first of all, we're passing in a string, so we can't pass in 50 or something like that. And secondly, that that string is at least two characters long, greater than one. 
So if this is the case, then I'm going to say, okay, well, that is a valid name and we can update it. So let's access the name from inside this class, which we can do. And we're going to set the name of that equal to the name we pass in. So we're now updating it. Okay. Now what we'll do is just return a little message to say the name has been updated. And in fact, what we'll do is change these two double quotes so that we can output the variable directly inside the string and we'll pass in the name there as well. So the name has been updated to name. Okay. So that's if it's valid. If it's not valid, if it doesn't pass those checks, then we're going to return a different response and we'll say not a valid name. Okay. So now if we want to set the name, if we want to change it at any point, we're going to call this function and we're going to pass in a name. So what I'm going to do now is say user two, and we want the set name function and we need to pass in a name. Now I'm going to pass in something that's not valid. So 50 and I'm going to echo what we get back because remember we return either this or this, and we're going to echo that out. So if I save and refresh, then we're going to see not a valid name. So we get that error because, and I'm going to comment this out. We get that error because this is not a string. Okay. So we're doing that bit of validation now. Now, if I comment this out again, if I want to try and change it to something that is valid, I'm going to duplicate this line, take off the comments and change it to short and save it. Now, if I refresh, we can see the name has been updated to Sean. And now if I try to access that name, let me comment this out. I'm going to say echo user two, and we want the name. So I'm just accessing that now. And I can't do this, remember, because we've set this to private. So I have to instead say get name like so. Then hopefully it should return the new value, which is going to be Sean and echo that out. So save it and refresh. And now we see Yoshi. However, that's because we um, commented that out where we changed it. So save that again and try it again. And now we can see the name has been updated to Sean. Then we see Sean again echoed to the browser. Cool. So now we're protecting our object a bit better and we're offering these entry points to read or update the data. Now we could do the same thing for the email here as well and do some different kind of validation for that if we want to. But I think you get the point now. So there we go, my friends, that is objects and classes for you. I've not delved too much into object oriented PHP inheritance or any of that stuff because this is a beginner series and that's all a bit more advanced. And I think this is enough to introduce the idea of objects so you're familiar with them. Then in the future, I think what I will do, if there's enough requests down below, I'll create a mini series on object oriented PHP in which I'll go into more detail. But anyway, that is the close of the entire series, my friends. I really hope you've enjoyed it and you've learned at least something along the way. And it's not been an epic waste of your time. If you do enjoy these videos, my friends, please don't forget to share them, subscribe and like, and I'm going to see you in the very next series.